Now that we are in countdown, the flight, the flight computer on Dragon uh, will switch to countdown mode. And we've also heard the flight Freedom, termination SpaceX. system is armed. Go for launch. Freedom is go for launch. That's our final go for launch. SpaceX reporting go and the crew reporting go. 30 seconds. Standing by for the first Command launch of 10, humans 9, from Space 8, Launch Complex 40. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, ignition full power, and liftoff of Crew 9. Go SpaceX, go Falcon, go NASA. Liftoff of Crew 9 now soaring to the International Space Station. Stage 1 Alpha. Stage 1 is nominal. Copy, 1 Alpha. Those nine Merlin engines now providing 1.7 million pounds of thrust, propelling Falcon 9 and Crew 9 and continuing to get good calls from teams here on the ground. Of course, these incredible views mean we are just a little bit past 30 minutes in, or 30 seconds into our ninth rotational crew mission. Power, telemetry nominal. Onboard Dragon and Falcon 9 with good call outs for mission control that everything is looking good. With that, stage one is throttling down to pass through max Q, which is the period of maximum dynamic pressure on Falcon 9 during ascent. Max Q. Confirmation of max Q. Vehicle is supersonic. And that Falcon 9 is now traveling faster than the speed of sound. Stage one throttle up. Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. That call out for one Bravo means we're in the second and final abort mode for the first stage and continuing to get good performance. And that chill is underway. The crew is pulling just over two Gs at this point. Next up, we heard the engine chill on the second stage MVAC engine has begun, and then we will have Miko or main engine cut off, where the nine engines on the first stage will cut off ahead of the first and the second stages, and then will separate from one another. Then that single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite and continue to carry crew nine to orbit while the first stage begins its journey back to Earth. Two minutes in and the crew is now traveling over 2,600 miles per hour. Stage one is throttling down. Confirmation there from Mission Control that stage one is throttling down as we prepare for main engine cutoff, followed shortly thereafter by stage separation and second engine start one. You did hear Mission Control out that we are chilling our- Miko. There's confirmation of Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Stage two alpha. And back ignition. Copy, two alpha. With that, we have had confirmation of Miko, stage step, and the ignition of our MVAC engine on board stage two. Our next major milestone is going to be the beginning of stage one boost back burn, which is expected in just a couple of seconds here. Of course, if you are just joining us, you've got views of our first stage on the left-hand side of your screen and of MVAC burning with our Crew-9 astronauts aboard up in space on the right-hand side of your screen. Now we are coming up on three minutes and 20 seconds since liftoff today, traveling over 4,000 miles per hour and 76 miles downrange. As our first stage makes its way back to Earth, we are tracking a landing attempt today at landing zone one, not too far from where we lifted off in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Confirmation there that both vehicles copy, copy, nominal trajectory. are on nominal trajectories. Everything looking good. Is Everything is looking good. And we're getting good performance on that single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. 
The crew's G load dips right now. We are gonna prepare to hit the separation event. Right now they're about one G, which is about what we're used to experiencing on Earth. Crews traveling almost 5,000 miles per hour now and 105 miles in altitude. As we await the entry burn for our first stage, you are getting great views of it on the left-hand side of your screen. You can also see two of our titanium grid fins, which are the primary mechanical structures. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Confirmation there from Mission Control that everything is still looking good. Freedom copies, nominal trajectory. Now, as I mentioned, those grid fins are the primary mechanical structures that we use to steer the booster back toward its landing zone, which today is LZ-1 at Cape Canaveral. Just as kind of a quick point of reference, those grid fins are about four by five feet, so roughly the size of a coffee table. Getting our first tracking shots of the booster on its way back to Earth. Again, we are tracking the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen and MVAC up in space on the right. And we do continue to hear good calls for that second stage. Again, we we will see this continue to fire in close until close to nine minutes into the flight. Now at five minutes and 45 seconds since liftoff today, this is accelerating Dragon to more than 17,000. Nominal trajectory. More good news. Freedom copies. Nominal trajectory. This second stage is bringing Dragon to more than 17,000 miles per hour. That puts our crew in orbit. And the single Merlin vacuum engine can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space. Stage one does perform three burns on its way back to Earth. The first is the boost back burn, followed shortly thereafter by the entry burn. The entry burn is used by Falcon 9 to slow the vehicle down before it reaches the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Nominal trajectory is there for mission control. Freedom copies, nominal trajectory. That entry burn is, of course, followed by the landing burn during which time we'll light three of, the MBA, or three of the Merlin engines on board the first stage. And we expect to see that landing burn just about a minute before we expect Dragon to be inserted into orbit. So we have two very exciting phases of flight, both for our first stage and our Crew-9 astronauts happening here at the same time. Stage two of TSS eight. So a great touchdown of stage one there just a second ago. And now of course we are continuing to follow our crew nine astronauts on their way to space. And we continue to get good calls for this second stage, that Merlin vacuum engine continuing to fire and propel our crew, now moving over 12,600 miles per hour and 611 miles downrange. Just over eight minutes since liftoff today, so we are expecting to see this continue to fire until just about the nine minute mark, at which point this engine will cut off. And of course, Dragon will coast for a few minutes, still attached Terminal to the guidance. second stage. Call. Copy, Shannon. And that call is for Shannon Ireland. That would be the uh, abort zone if we were to abort at this point in the flight. However, we are continuing to hear good calls about Dragon's performance. And that shut down. Confirmation of the Merlin vacuum engine shutting down. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. 
good news there from Mission. Freedom copies nominal orbital insertion. From Mission Control and our crew that we have had nominal Dragon orbit insertion. Stations. Launch escape system disarmed. Freedom copies. LES disarmed. In, in nine quick minutes, uh, we now have two new crew members on their way to the International Space Station, having taken off from Space, space Launch Complex 40. The crew now being in a good or expected orbit. We'll continue to coast for these few minutes and, uh, and then we get our first views inside the capsule of our two crew members, Nick Haig and Alexander Gorbanov. They are just continuing to stay in their suits and in their seats during this dynamic portion of the flight. We're gonna continue to coast for a few minutes after this second stage engine cutoff. These, this allows the rates and motion from that long burn to settle out. There are some small reaction thrusters on the upper stage of, or the upper part of the second stage that can be used to counteract any residual motion. That basically makes sure we are in a stable coast before Dragon separates from Falcon, and that'll happen about 12 minutes into the flight. So about a minute and a half from now, we expect to see Dragon actually separating from the second stage. Again, we did hear the crew has been successfully inserted into a good orbit. And again, this is them now in microgravity, one of them, Alexander Gorbanov, for the very first time. So as Leah mentioned, we are now just a few minutes away from the separation of Dragon from stage two, during which time a number of activation checkouts occur. Automatically, first we're gonna be checking out 12 of the Draco maneuvering thrusters all around the service section of the Dragon spacecraft. We're also, of course, gonna get ready for that nose cone opening, which will allow Dragon to dock with the International Space Station about 28 hours from now. The nose cone stays closed for the flight uphill to help protect again all of the guidance, navigation, and control sensors and Dragon's docking adapter. It's also covering four of our Draco thrusters that will be used for the majority of different phasing burns required as Dragon chases down the space station. We are currently standing by for that separation, which could happen any time in the next couple of minutes. Currently, you can see the crew is uh, just relaxing in their seats. They are definitely vigilant, though. They are able to monitor those crew displays in front of them, keep up with what's going on in the mission. Uh, they could take control if they needed to. However, it's been a seamless ride to space today. Good views they are looking up into dragon's trunk looking at the heat shield on the bottom of dragon that crew nine will use when it returns home early next year dragon spacex dragon separation confirmed there and freedom copies good separation there you heard from Mission Control. Both Dragon, Chief Engineer on Countdown 1. Nick, Alex, on behalf of the entire team, we thank you for flying with Falcon 9 today and wish you a great mission. And Freedom, this is Launch Director on Countdown. On behalf of the entire SpaceX Launch and Recovery Team, I'd like to extend our congratulations to the entire Crew 9 team. Zena, Stephanie, Nick, Alex, Butch, and Sonny. It's an honor to be a part of this mission with all of you. I'd also like to give a shout out to the Falcon 9 Crew 9 combo. The best bundle in the league, baby. Godspeed, Crew 9. Uh, couldn't say it any better. Thank you, guys. You know, we had the opportunity to meet so many people that were involved with the, the Falcon 9, and uh, along the way was a sweet ride. I'm pretty sure my youngest son would say it was Sigma. Alex has got a few words to add as well. All the entities that made this launch possible. The Lost Cosmos, NASA, Big Six. And thank you to my family and friends for their support. And also, I'd like to express my gratitude to the hundreds of thousands of people around the world who are involved in the development of space technologies and to move humanity forward. Today's launch is also their accomplishment. Хочу сказать спасибо. Роскосмосу и НАСА совместно с SpaceX за успешный запуск человека на орбиту, за очередной успешный запуск, и также благодарить родных и близких за поддержку. Спасибо.
incredible words from our commander and great views of Dragon up in orbit on your screen right now. It's been about 14 minutes and 30 seconds since Coming up on 15 minutes now since liftoff today, you got a quick look inside the capsule. Dragon SpaceX, we had a nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. No scone deploy is in progress. And Freedom copies all. Thank you. Confirmation there that our nose cone deploy is underway. That means that the six hooks that hold the nose cone in, plate dr in place during launch and the ascent portions of flight have begun to retract. That will allow the nose cone to start to swing open and deploy. That will uncover a, num a number of critical systems for the flight up to the space station, including the forward bulkhead thrusters and the docking hatch. Incredible views from our crew up in space on your screen right now, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to the view out of Dragon's window as they make their way to the space station. I can only imagine. And that journey to the space station will take about 28 hours, so they won't arrive until tomorrow afternoon. In the meantime, they will have the opportunity to get out of their suits, uh, to get out of their seats as well, and, and kind of just enjoy the ride. They're gonna shift into some off-duty time that allows them to, um, to you know, prepare any food that they would want to. That allows them to um, maybe even call down to the ground. Um, they will also obviously get some sleep before a really big day tomorrow, monitoring the arrival and docking to the International Space Station. Of course, we're going to cover all of that live. I'm really looking forward to seeing two more crew members float into the orbiting laboratory. And if you're just joining us, we did lift off now at 16 minutes and 29 seconds ago. Uh, that was right on time at 1.17 p.m. Eastern time from Space Launch Complex 40 down at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. We have two members on board Dragon today. That's NASA astronaut Nick Haig, who's serving as the commander, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov, who's making his very first flight to space. Once they arrive at the International Space Station tomorrow afternoon, they will be joining nine other crew members on orbit. They'll be up there for about a week. A week is, is probably the best guess um, until the Crew 8 team, uh, it is time for that crew to come home. Of course, they launched about seven months ago at this point. Uh, and um, they will undock after they have completed a handover period with the Crew-9 crew, bringing them up to speed on everything that they've been working on for the last seven months in orbit. So once they depart, we'll be back down to our typical approximately seven uh, people living and working aboard the International Space Station. We are getting really spectacular views from up in space today. Shot there of our MVAC engine. We did get confirmation several minutes ago of SES-1. We know that nose cone opening is underway as well. Those are uh, a series of hooks and latches that allow the nose cone to open. And uh, that nose cone is closed during launch to protect the docking hatch, to protect four uh, bulkhead thrusters that we will use for some of the larger burns that help us get to the International Space Station. One of the other things we're doing right now is going ahead and opening the ECLIS system, which stands for the Environmental Control and Life Support System, which will be activated inside of Dragon. As Leah mentioned earlier, soon our crew will be able to get their visors open and get out of their spacesuits and settle in for that 20-hour ride, or 28-hour ride to the International Space Station. Good views there of the opening of Dragon's nose cone on the left-hand side of your screen. Coming up on 19 minutes since liftoff today, the crew, again, had a good orbital insertion, uh, and that actually puts 14 people currently in low Earth orbit. That includes the uh, 
those living on the International Space Station right now, as well as those living on the Chinese Space Station. So a total of 14 humans are now not off the planet, but rather orbiting around it. More good views from our dragon nose cone on the left-hand side of your screen. As it very gradually swings open, obviously in space, everything we do has an equal and opposite reaction. So slow and steady really wins the race here. Again, now 20 minutes since liftoff today. Dragon is flying free from the second stage. And it looks like they're about to enter an orbital nighttime. So now that they're at orbital velocity, that's 17,500 miles per hour, uh, they are gonna see 16 sunrises and sunsets a day. Again, it was an on-time liftoff at 1.17 p.m. Eastern time from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida and a clean ride uphill. We've had some good communication from Mission Control up to our Crew 9 astronauts already today. One of the things you may heard every one of the things you may hear every time we communicate with the crew is a slight beep beforehand. That's called a quindar tone and actually dates all the way back to the early days of human spaceflight and is effectively a radio signal indicating that we're communicating between the between the crew in orbit and our mission control team on the ground. We now have views back inside the capsule. Dragon SpaceX, we had a nominal nose cone opening. Um, we do have just about three minutes here left in the ground station pass. If you've got any fluffy stowaways you'd like to introduce. Yeah, Freedom copies, uh, good drinker checkout, good nose cone opening. And uh, I just, just so happen to have a uh, furry friend with me. Yeah, and SpaceX Freedom. So yeah, I've got a, uh, a little Falcon here. I love the uh, the package of Falcon 9 Crew 9, and yeah, we've got a Falcon on board with us. Uh, this one's a multi-flyer though. Uh, was on uh, my first flight with Alexei and I, and uh, with Alexei and I and Christina. And now me and Alex. So say hello to Aurora. And we see your dragon. Uh, actually, a good view right now because we're looking at the display cam. And dragon delayed call, but nominal TCS reconfiguration as well as Ford bulkhead Draco checkouts. And Freedom Copies, good TCS, good uh, Draco checkouts. Spectacular views of our Crew-9 uh, astronauts and zero-G indicator up in orbit. Human spaceflight has come so far in the last five years with Dragon. Since Demo-2 in May of 2020, SpaceX's Dragon fleet has launched a total of 54 crew members to space, 34 on behalf of NASA and their partners, and 20 commercial astronauts, including the first two all-civilian missions to space and the first three all-private passenger missions to the International Space Station. In addition to flying people, <clears throat> excuse me, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft also enables researchers the opportunity to fly critical science to orbit. And that's just like what we saw with the three investigations that NASA's human research program flew on Polaris Dawn. 
So far, SpaceX and Dragon have carried over 1,000 research experiments to and from low Earth orbit, both to the International Space Station and on our free flyer missions as well. From DNA sequencing to 3D printing, studies enabled by Dragon and the International Space Station and, and the International Space Station test a variety of technologies, systems, and materials that will be needed for future long-duration exploration missions. Every mission yields critical research and learnings that help make life both on Earth and in space better. And flights like today's help us continue to lay this foundation for our future among the stars and continue our mission to make life multiplanetary. But for now, we'll be signing off from SpaceX, and we're going to send you back over to NASA. But before we go, we do want to thank NASA for entrusting us with today's mission. And of course, thank you to all of the viewers for being here with us today. Yeah, it was a really special mission. It was fantastic to see uh, now two new crew members in orbit and on the way to the International Space Station. So with that, we're going to end our coverage from Hawthorne until we pick back up with our docking coverage in about 26 hours. So for now, we're going to send it back to you, Zena and Daryl, at Kennedy Space Center to wrap up today's launch coverage. Thank you very much, Leah and Atticus, and welcome back here to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We're just about 25 minutes ago. We watched Crew 9 lift off from Space Launch Complex 40 for the first time with humans at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov are now en route to the International Space Station. I'm Daryl Dale, and this is NASA astronaut Zena Cardman, who has been with us for the past four hours documenting Crew 9's path from astronaut crew quarters suiting up all the way to the rocket, lifting off, and then getting into space today. And I